Oh boy, another 20 minutes of me rambling. And this time it's a Game Boy Pocket Frog Stravaganza. So today I've got two mods that I'm going to show how to install that are available now, probably. First of all is this wire-free tactile button mod for the Game Boy Pocket. So this is very similar to the ones that I have available for the Game Boy Color and have been around for a while. Um, I have a, an existing version of this for the Pocket that you had to wire up a bunch and it was a pain in the ass and there were many wires. This is much cleaner. Um, it's also in a white PCB, hooray! And then the second one is the two-stage battery indicator for the Game Boy Pocket. And this one has another purpose, which is, as you can see, adding an LED to an LED-less pocket. Good stuff. Uh, so without further ado, let's go ahead and get to installing these. So I'm going to start with the uh, tactile button mod. So before, as I mentioned, like you had to wire this up, there were like five, three, boo, eight, eight wires or something. It's really gross. If you had a clear shell, something like this super nice cloud game store one, it doesn't look super great unless you know what you're doing or you just like wires or something. This one instead is a single flex, um, which has the diode arrays built in. Um, the diode arrays were there before, but making it a single flex allows me to run all the traces up here. And then these are going to nicely line up with the, these uh, button vias right there. So let me go ahead and get my soldering iron turned on. And what we're going to do is we're going to prep these vias right here. So there's six of them for P10 through 15. And we'll just give them a bit of a rough up with this fiberglass pen just to try and get any, you know, grime and, you know, whatever conformal coating is left on there. And then we'll take some isopropyl alcohol. We'll just kind of clean that up a bit. Dry it off. There we go. Uh, and now those are mostly prepped. So what we need to do now is we need to get a little bit of solder into these holes prior to actually installing this. And the reason we want to do this is because if we had this on top from the beginning, it would be very, very difficult for us to actually get solder to flow through the vias on the flex and then into the, the vias on the board. So instead what we're going to do is I have my iron here. Uh, actually, let me put that away. And first we are going to take some flex. So we'll just put the flux right on the vias. You don't need a huge amount, just a little bit, hopefully. And then take the iron and beat up a decent amount of solder right on the tip. Um, and the reason we're gonna do this is because we're just gonna kinda run this across these vias and try and get solder to flow into each one. This one down here is giving me a little bit of trouble, but otherwise, yeah, so that wasn't too bad. Let me clean that off real quick and we'll kind of see what's going on here. Whoopsie. So with the flux cleaned off, you can see that there is solder in each of those vias. And let's get a little bit closer. And that should be good enough. It doesn't need to be covering the entire thing. In fact, it might actually be impossible unless you were to go in and like scratch the vias with a pen or a, a knife um, to cover the entire thing, the entire ring. Uh, but we need just enough for the solder to go through these vias and connect to the solder there. So what we're going to do is we are going to lay the flex board over and we're going to try and find our alignment here. So this is going to be a little bit tricky. You need to make sure you have pretty good lighting for this. Um, I think that's pretty good. And so first, let's go ahead and tack down the ground pin over here. Just so we can get this board anchored in place. Uh, this isn't actually electrically required uh, because ground, these are not common ground boards. And so, you know, ground isn't really a crucial factor here. It's simply a mechanical thing. So again, let's just uh, get a little flex on there, get a little bit of 
solder, beat it up on the iron, come in, tin that pad, and now we are tacked down nicely. Let's push down again. Let's make sure that we're still lined up, and indeed we are. We can see the little solder balls in the vias right through there. And so this is going to be the tricky part. What we're gonna wanna, gonna wanna do is get a little bit of flux right on there. And because of the nature of flex PCBs, they will, surprise, flex a little. It's hard to get them to lie completely flat. So what we're gonna do is we are going to take a pair of tweezers and we're just going to push down this little corner here or wherever it's popping up. And then we are going to one by one go over each of these uh, little vias right here. So right there, right there, and this is really just tacking them into place. We're going to come through with some additional solder and kind of clean up. So you can see it's lying flat. So we at least have a couple of these fully connected. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to start at the bottom here. Just get a little bit on there, go up to the next one. Make sure you keep your iron clean. You don't want too much solder on here. All right, go with this one. This one right here. And then, there we go. And then what I like to do at the very end, just to make sure everything is very well connected is, again, kind of come in with some more flux. Come in with the tweezers. Pick that iron back up, hold with the tweezers on either end, and then just come in here and tap to clean up those joints and make sure everything flows properly into those holes. All right. So now we're going to clean this up again with our friendly neighborhood isopropyl alcohol on a Q-tip and just clean those off. And sometimes you may see that you've removed some of the cover lay on the Flex PCB, um, and that shouldn't be an issue. Um, it's really aesthetic more than anything, um, especially where it, with the operations like these where you might have to hold the iron to the cover lay more for more time than you normally would. Uh, sometimes it can burn off um, just a little bit. It shouldn't be an issue, uh, but let's go ahead and find out. So to make sure that all of our connections are good, what we're going to do is we're going to take our multimeter. We're going to put it in continuity mode, and then we will make sure that these points right here are properly connected to this additional set of vias that run to the same, uh, the, the vias down here. Uh, make sure we have continuity between them, and that basically just means Yes, that this flex, flex board is properly tacked down and the connections are being made and we should be good to go. So let's start. Let me get this solder spool out of the way. We'll start at this bottom one here, which corresponds to this top via right here. We get a beep and let me move this in a bit just so everyone can hear. So again, down at the bottom up to this top one. And then what I like to do is move to the next one with my bottom probe. Next V up top, we're good. Move, move, good, move, move, there we go. Move, good, good. And the reason I like to walk it like that is because sometimes when you go and solder these videos, you might get a bridge. Um, sometimes it's hard to see, you know, if you have a microscope, obviously you can like inspect visually pretty easily to see if anything's wrong. But if you just kind of walk your multimeter like I did there, uh, that should catch pretty much any bridging between um, adjacent pins that you might have. So that one's all good. Now we are going to move on to the battery indicator. And after that, we will go ahead and test everything out. But much like the Game Boy Color one, so it just kind of like interfaces with the EXT port right here. So ground and five volts. And then unlike the original versions, the Game Boy Color one is going to have this very soon. This one is wire free because as you can see, um, due to the location of the power switch on the Game Boy Pocket, we have a VCC via right here. And that's how we're going to get the battery reference voltage.
So what I'm going to do is kind of flip this around, going to get my solder all at the ready. All right. And what I like to do is just so I don't have to have three hands, which I don't have, going to add just a little bit of solder to this grounding pin right here. Let's get a little bit more rounded up. And then what we're going to do is we're going to bring in the indicator flex board, just like so. Line it up as best we can. Make sure that this VCC VL lines up with the pad on the flex. And then we're going to come in and tack down at the ground pin. And don't worry if it doesn't look perfect right away. You know, the primary purpose for the first um, tacking down is to, or the soldering the first pin is to get it tacked down and then we'll come in later and clean it up. So now that that's good, we're going to come in here on the five volts. I'm going to solder that. That looks good. Get a bit more on the five volt now that we're all in place and we don't have to worry. Good. And now up here, we're going to get this VCC via And that looks like we should be good. And just to make sure, I think I'm a little bit misaligned on this, this tack board there, but that shouldn't be an issue. Um, what we're gonna do, just to make sure that this VCC via is properly uh, connected to our board, what we're going to do is we're going to, once again, take our multimeter slap it into continuity mode and then let's see what's the best way of going about this so we're going to put a probe on this leg of the chip because we don't want pushing uh, down on the the board to make make a connection where one normally isn't so let's try and get a probe onto this, this leg of the chip and then we will, with the power switch in the on position. Yep, touch to the positive terminal and make sure that we have continuity. So that means that we are getting battery voltage straight to the indicator board. And we should be good. So I am going to get this all installed into a shell with buttons. And we are going to test the functionality of this out. Ta-da, editing. Unfortunately, this one has a replacement power switch that doesn't interface properly with the switch cover, but uh, let's turn it on and find out what's going on here. Nice, so we see that we have a power LED right there. Uh, and the cool thing that I forgot to mention, but maybe you noticed, was that this Game Boy Pocket motherboard didn't actually have an LED to begin with. So. This mod not only does it give you the low battery indicator, but it allows you to add an LED pretty easily to a uh, Game Boy Pocket that didn't have one before. Pretty cool stuff. And this one has another purpose, which is, as you can see, adding an LED to an LED-less pocket. Good stuff. Now let's find out what our button state is. So. Oop, down is working, up is working, A is working, very good. One day I'll actually proceed past this and save, and I won't have to do this on video every time. Quiet you. Hopping out of bed, doing a good roll, and all the clicky buttons, as you can hear, are working marvelously. B is working. Nice. So there it is. The indicator, I would say, is pretty easy to install, especially if you've done the GBC one. Uh, nothing too complicated there, you know, no wires, nothing super tricky in terms of what you have to solder to. This um, tack switch board, on the other hand, this I would say is better for more advanced users. The Game Boy Color one's a bit easier because it uses the test pads instead. Obviously, we don't have those here. We have to deal with the soldering two vias through vias essentially which is definitely a bit more advanced um, and can be present 
problems to people who aren't, you know, super skilled, don't have a lot of experience in soldering, but doable, I think. But keep that in mind. You've been warned. So these should be available on my Etsy shop as of whenever this video goes up, or maybe I have died and I've ceased to produce them. Either way, they should be there. Gerber's, or rather the Shared Osh Park projects, should be following up pretty soon afterwards, if not at the same time. So you could build your own if you are so inclined. But that is all for today. Uh, leave your thoughts below. Let me know what you think. And see you next time.